In this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how to match the colors between two photos. So when you cut out a photo and you drop it on the background, you can make the colors match. They look like they belong together. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and welcome to this week's episode where I'm going to show you how to match the color of a cutout to match that background. And it's a little bit unusual almost right now recording one of these in the studio because I'm so used to doing these live streams now. So every Thursday at 1 p.m. PDT, their specific daylight time, which is California, I'm doing a live stream so we can all get together during this pandemic time. So if you're watching this years in the future, this is what we were doing at the time. And if you're watching this right now, Tune in on Thursday. All right, let's get started with this tutorial right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut out this photo and then we're going to drop it on this background, which has a very different coloring, and then we're going to make it match. Now, I've already cut this out. As you can see here, I just used a layer mask here. So we did a selection. I'm not going to go through that in this tutorial because I have tons of tutorials on how to cut out images in Photoshop. Just have a look on the channel. You'll see lots of them there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this layer here and I'm going to drag it into the other document. So just drag it up to the tab. You'll see that tab will become active. I haven't released yet. Notice that that pointer is white. That means it's loaded. I'm going to take it down to about the middle and now I'm going to release. And then what it's going to do is it's going to combine these two images. Now clearly this top one is a little too big. So let's make it smaller. Control T. And that would be Command T on Mac, Control T on Windows for free transform. And that brings up the bounding box. Right now you can only see one of them because these are really huge. So I need to kind of zoom out a little bit so I can fit it on there. Here's a little tip for you. Hold down Command 0. And that will zoom it out. And that would be Control 0 on Windows. And that enables us to see the whole selection there. And now we can see these bounding boxes and we can just kind of drag this down. I'm going to hold down the shift key to constrain it. And let's just kind of put it in position. Let's put her right here. Okay, I'm just hitting return. Command zero or control zero once again will fit it to the screen. Now we have a few things we want to deal with here. One of them is the luminosity. Another one is the color. Now, sometimes when you have a photo like this where, you know, maybe the light is coming from a different direction, although it's pretty hard to tell here because we have different light sources. We have these street lamps, so there could be a street lamp anywhere casting the light onto her, but let's just flip her around. So I'm just going to select that, hit Control T, right click, and then flip horizontal. So this is kind of one of those things, just hit enter and drag it into position. This is one of those things you can do sometimes if the lighting is coming from the wrong direction, because I want the lighting to come from the right hand side here. Imagine there's another street light just kind of coming down and that's illuminating her a little bit. So a little trick you can do is to flip it around. Now, when you do that, make sure there's no logos or anything like that or a car, you know, where you're going to appear on the wrong side. Um, so let's just go ahead now and we're going to match the tone and the color. So before I go into the trick for matching the color, what we're going to do right now is we're going to match the tone. And here's a little secret. If I go down here under the adjustment layer, create an adjustment, and we're going to choose black and white. What happens when we choose the black and white is it just enables us to see the tones clearly. So we're not going to get distracted by all the color. And as you can see right now, it's way easier to see if these are matching or not. And I can already kind of tell that the shadows in this background are darker than the shadows in here. So let's go ahead and do an adjustment. I'm going to add another adjustment layer. We're going to click on the adjustment layer here. Now you could use levels of curves. A lot of the time I use curves, but in this case, I'm going to use levels just to make it a little simpler for you to kind of see what I'm doing here. Now check out my other tutorial on curves where I go in depth and teach you curves inside of Photoshop. All right, so what we want to do right now is if I make any adjustments, notice it's going to affect everything. We don't want that. We just want to affect that layer underneath with our girl on it. So what we can do is see this little icon there, click on there. You'll see a little arrow appear. Now it's clipping just to our layer here. 
And if we make the adjustment, it's only going to affect her. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. All right, so we want to kind of match it. The first thing that we can look at is the shadows. If we look in here, we can see we've got nice dark blacks in here. Very, very dark tones. Inside the picture of our person here, though, we're lacking that. So what we're going to do is go up under the levels. There's three levels here. There is blacks, whites, and mids. So let's take the blacks and pull them up a little bit until our shadows are kind of matching the shadows inside of our photograph. I think that's definitely looking a lot better than it was before. A lot closer. All right, let's do the same thing with the highlights. So if we're looking into the highlights, what's the brightest part? We've got a street light here. We've got the moon. These areas here are actually emitting light. So they're going to be incredibly bright. So we could look at other areas in here and say, hey, you know, how bright are the clouds that are being illuminated? Pretty bright. And then we could look at her here. Now, of course, the shadows, you know, the highlights on this side, but there could be another street light here. We don't know. So anyway, let's go in. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to recover a little bit. I don't want to brighten her up because I feel like the whites are almost too bright. So we're going to go not up here. We're going to go underneath. And then we're going to pull this one just a little bit just to roll off the highlights a little bit. And now we can just go to the midtones and just kind of tune this. What feels right with this photo? I'm kind of going that way just a little bit. A little bit will go a long way. And it just kind of feels more like what we want. Let's have a look at before. Now you can see it's clearly washed out. And then after these tones are definitely matching a lot better. That's great. So now we can turn off or throw away our black and white layer. We don't need it anymore. Let's just throw it away. And we're looking good right now. So here we are. Obviously, the colors need to change. What I'm going to do just for the sake of this tutorial is I'm just going to hit a control J. I'm just going to copy this, move it to the top and hide it. And the reason I'm doing that is just so I can show you a before and after later on. All right, so we're going to select our layer right there. And now we want to do our coloring effect. So what we're going to do is go under image adjustments. And this is where all the image adjustments are. Generally, as you saw before, we did use an adjustment layer. But the one that we're going to use now is the match color. And match color is not available as a adjustment layer. So we have to apply it here. Unfortunately, too, for those of you who are wondering if I should turn that into a smart object and then I can use it non-destructively. Um, unfortunately, match color does not work on a smart, smart object either. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and apply it right here. So choose match color. Great. Now, this match color is so powerful when it comes to matching our cutouts with our backgrounds. We've got three controls basically, but we can also choose where we want to apply it. So what we're going to do is under source. If we look at the name of the document we're working on right now, it's called Match Color BG. And by the way, I grabbed both of these photos from Adobe Stock. So if you're looking for photos, check out Adobe Stock. They have lots of good ones there. All right. So what we want to do is use Match Color BG. So we choose source here and we want to use Match Color BG. So now we're working inside the same document. This is so powerful, it can actually take the color from another document and apply it. But that's another tutorial. All right. So now we want to choose which is the one we want to get the colors from. That's the layer. And if we look down here, it's called background. So under layer, go down and choose background. Now immediately, we're going to see the tones from that background are being applied. Now, obviously, it's a little too strong. That's OK. Let's just drag this off to the side a little bit so we can see what's going on. We have three options here. Luminance allows us to adjust the brightness. Color intensity allows us to adjust, adjust the saturation, but not the saturation of the entire image. It's actually the saturation of the layer before we apply this effect. So that would be the saturation of that layer itself. And fade enables us to fade how much of that adjustment we apply. So obviously the match color is too strong. So we're going to take the fade and we're going to pull it back. If I was to pull the fade all the way up, it would have no effect. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at 100. So my eye can calibrate, and obviously this is too much. So let's start to dial in that color adjustment. So as we're going here, we're starting to get a little bit more, picking up those tones of that surrounding area. All right, that's looking pretty good so far. I think I might need to brighten it up a little bit though with the luminance. So let's go into the luminance and we're gonna brighten it up a little bit. See what we're doing? We're just getting it to kind of match a little bit better. In fact, I've probably gone a little far. And if I wanna fade it more, I can. But I actually wanna just put it in about there. Feels quite nice. Let's have a look at that. Luminous is one other thing now, the color intensity. If I increase this, see how it increases the original colors? If I decrease it, gets rid of the original colors and all you see is the color that we've applied. So I'm gonna take the color intensity all the way down and now we're gonna pull it up. So what we're doing is bringing back the original color so we can say, hey, how much of our original color do we want and fade, of course, is how much of this new color do we want? So let's just kind of get it maybe there when the colors are just starting to kick in. And you can see that's essentially what we're looking at. And if we look at this before and after, you can see we're starting to get a pretty good effect. Now you can play around with the luminance. You can make this darker if you wanted. And, you know, it depends how we really want to do this. Let me go up just a little bit. I kind of like it about there and click OK. And this is what we see right now. So if we look quickly, this is what we had before, and this is what we have after. Now, here's the nice thing about applying these tone adjustments separately. If we feel these are a little strong, this is what it would look like without it. it still looks a little too washed out, but we can go in here under our level adjustment that we created, and we can roll it back a little bit and just start to blend that in and just kind of mix it. So if we wanted to make this a little bit less contrasty, we can see now it's starting to match a lot better. Now there's one last thing we want is some kind of a grounding shadow here so she doesn't just look like she's floating in the air. So why don't we do that quickly? So let me just grab this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna make a copy of this. So just Control J, just copies it. Let me hide all this. Okay, what I want to do is I just want to apply this mask first. So let's right click on this mask and we're going to apply that layer mask. And then that just gives us that transparency. And now I want to convert, just fill this with black. So I know if I use the Alt or the Option Delete key, that would fill everything with black. We don't want that. But if we hold down the Shift key, so that's Option Shift Delete, it will protect the transparency when we fill it. And that's great. All right, let's turn our layer on on top. Let's just select our black here in the background, and I'm just gonna hit the arrow key and just nudge it down a couple of pixels. And we can see now we're starting to get this shadow underneath. Obviously it's everywhere else, but don't worry. Okay, so let's just choose filter and we're gonna grab the blur, grab our Gaussian blur, and then just give it a little bit of blur. So watch this on the bottom here. Just trying to soften the edge of that a little bit so it's not so harsh. It just should be just a very, very small amount. There we go, just a small amount there. And now we only want it on the bottom of the case to kind of ground that shadow. So what we're gonna do is just select the rest of it, just grab our lasso tool, and I'm just gonna start from here, make a selection all the way around, go up under there, and so I've selected all this and I'm just gonna delete it. So if it's that selected, hit delete, control D to deselect. And if we look at this before and after, you can see we've put our little grounding shadow there. Now, of course we could also, you know, cast shadows and do more things like that, but that's the basics here of matching the color. Let's have a look at this before and after. So if we look at this before, you can see it doesn't match at all. And then after it's starting to match that scene. So using this match color is gonna work really well for pretty much any image. Sometimes you wanna watch out though, if there's a lot of color in the background, um, say there's a lot of different colors in the foreground, but the sky and the luminance is a different one. You could actually just make a selection around that area. 
And then when you apply that match color, it's actually gonna take just from that selection. So that's just an extra little tip there. So this tutorial was a request from last week's uh, live stream. So come on into our live stream on Thursday. And if you want a tutorial, you can request it right there. So anyway, uh, let me know in the comments what you guys thought about this. Was this useful? Did you learn something new? I'd love to know. Let's hear your comments underneath. And if you are new here to Photoshop Cafe, welcome to our family. I really encourage you to hit the subscribe button right now so you can get a new tutorial from me every single week. Make sure you turn on all notifications and then that way um, YouTube will let you know when I upload a new video, which is every Tuesday. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time or this Thursday, I'll see you at the cafe.